here on BBC One, the stars are out and in Liquid News. Christopher Price. Good evening. These are the week's headlining stories. Penny pinching pot of pounds. Zoe's not happy with her muggled cash. Nicole and Robbie swing together for the Christmas top slot. Queen of Hearts, the musical German stage diner tribute. Plus, I'm stretching for the stars. S Club, live in the studio. Hello, my name is Christopher. Good to have you with us. The smell of carp and all things nice. In the next 30 minutes, the week's main entertainment news stories has experienced nightly on our live BBC Choice show at 7 o'clock. Now, this edition's lead story, their movie is on course to become one of the biggest earners of all time when it opens tomorrow. But the makers of Harry Potter have been accused of penny-pinching and offering to, quote, crap money to its British stars. This all brings into sharp focus with British actors' demands to get more money from DVD and video sales from the big studios. If they don't get what they want, we could be looking at an all-out equity thespian strike from December the 1st. Of liquid news, Rebecca Lovell. Right hand over the broom and say up. Oh. Before the film is even playing to the public, the stars are indulging in a little broomstick bashing of their own. Oh. Oh. Actress Zoe Wanamaker, who plays Harry Potter's games mistress, describes movie makers Warner Brothers as notoriously mean, calling the pay terrible. Be so close to film's release and come out and sort of say, well, I didn't have it, did, didn't get a fair deal out of it, does, does strike you as a bit sort of, well, you should have thought of that before kind of thing. In fact, actors on Harry Potter are leading the way for actors' pay, thanks to Equity, who have been fighting for a fairer deal from British film producers. In September, Equity asked members not to sign flat-fee deals, but don't give actors a share in the film's success. It's that or all out strike on December the 1st. Warner Brothers wisely agreed to just such a deal for all Harry Potter actors, who will now share in things like video and DVD sales, something that's standard practice in the States. Warner Brothers are refusing to comment on who or how much. They say, as far as they're concerned, individual deals remain highly confidential. But it's no secret that the young Harry Potter was almost fobbed off with £75,000 before his agent renegotiated, upping it to more like a million. From Warner's point of view, they want to get the best deals they possibly can because, I mean, obviously they're the ones who are putting out $100 million to make the movie, so... Uh, you know, they, they want to try to, to negotiate good, good contracts where they obviously make as much money as they possibly can out of the film. And the young wizard is expected to conjure up a small fortune for his makers. Already Harry's throwing open cinema doors at a record number of screens in the States. It was like great, I mean like... I can't speak about it, it's too good. With talk of record box office takings this weekend around the world, sharing profit for Harry Potter means big business. Gryffindor! And thanks to equity, some of that muggle money might filter down to the talent. Rebecca Lovell, BBC News. Yeah, right. Uh, I've never had a dream come true. That is until now. The entire S Club 7 is here. How is everyone? Very well. Very well. Very well. We were told in the middle of the week we were only getting three of you. We weren't happy with that. Oh, oh really? Yeah, oh. all of you all of you or nothing. Yeah. Oh, yes. Right. Uh, all or nothing. How many other of you? Seven of us. Seven, Seven as well. The burning question, uh, honestly, I want to get to the S in S Club. Yeah. Mm. What does that stand for? Is it obvious or am I just being really stupid? Here? You're really being stupid. What is it for? <laughs> <laughs> it's anything. You know. Swingers? Yes, yeah. swingers. Satan? Yeah. No. Yeah. What does it actually stand for? No. Absolutely nothing. nothing. Basically, it's, no, we it's thought it was a good it? idea for the fans to get involved with, like, you know, they can choose what it means, whether it's super special, sexy, whatever they wanted it to mean. It's like, all of kind of corny, but yeah, that's what we're trying to do. Uh, boy, uh, this is about witches and wizards and things like that. Okay. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. Uh, you have psychic powers. No. 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 <laughs> I understood you did. No, she doesn't. No. It was a really big misunderstanding. Okay. You don't know what I'm thinking right now, do you? No. More from S Club 7, uh, of course, coming up later in the show. Now, the big story out of the West Coast this week 
It's Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman. Have you been hearing this? No. No. Well, I'm about to tell you. Uh, they're keeping their legal briefs clean by reaching an out of court divorce settlement. That's during the last few hours. Oh, nice. The former life partners yes, have, great, have agreed to keep all the details of their deal at top and bottom secret, but Tom did appear on US TV to go emotionally moist for the first time since the split. <laughs> he admitted that he still cared for Nicole and that the divorce had taught him a great deal about himself. The cruiser went on to say that he was a romantic and would marry again when the time was right. Tom is, of course, currently boarding the good ship, Penelope Cruz. <laughs> We're family. We've always been a family. We're now just the parents are no longer together, but we still care about each other. Uh, and have, there's a lot of respect and a lot of love there. And, uh, and we love our kids, and uh, so we're going to do that. The noise in the background was, of course, his uh, mini metro just waiting <laughs> in the background. The Liquid News LA celebrity correspondent who specializes in nuptials is Gail Murphy. Let's go to Los Angeles. Gail, how are you doing? And what is the deal with this? They've kept it all clean and out of the press. How did they do that? Well, it started out as Mission Impossible, but now it's Mission Responsible, as two of the biggest two of the biggest stars in Hollywood have decided to act like adults and get the deal done. What about uh, Nicole Kidman? It looks as if her career has just gone stellar uh, since the uh, divorce, since the breakup. Do you think it will keep going that way? I think, it, you know, I, I think both of them are on course, and I think both of their careers have been going really well. Uh, Tom has Vanilla Sky, which is having its huge premiere next month. So uh, he'll do very well with that. It's another Cameron Crowe movie. Gail yeah, Murphy, thank you very much. Gail yeah, Murphy talking to us from Los yeah. Angeles. Do you two have any pre yet? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. No. You're right there. I'm going to have an itch, actually. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone help you with that? No, it's fine. No, I'm okay. Good. We know we're very attentive to our guests. Now, and of course, uh, PR machines have been at work suggesting that Nicole Kidman and Robbie Williams have been uh, basically doing the do, which, of course, is about as likely as me being the father of Jordan's baby. Anyway, Nicole has teamed up with Robbie. <laughs> Third reaction there. Uh, with Robbie for an assault on the Christmas number one hot slot. They are the current favourites. Do you have a Christmas single coming out, or is, or the one, is this it? This is it. Now, the Williams duet is a cover of an old Sinatra hit is called Something Stupid. Filling his liquid stocking, here's Max Flint. Hello, everyone. Robbie and Nicole Mance rumours have been floating around for months, and this might be the reason why. Record industry hype is rarely on speaking terms with the truth, and when a Christmas number one is at stake, they're both hiring lawyers. Get that back! But here goes, Liquid News has an early copy of the video to something stupid. Oh, pin back your ears. Oh, I love you. And afterwards we drive into a quiet little place and have a drink or two. And then I go and spoil it all by saying something stupid like I love you. Is that a lesbian subplot, or were they gazing into each other's eyes lovingly? Who knows, you'll have to wait for five years for the Andrew Moore book to come out. But still, it's a good song, considering, one, buying public went for Bob the Builder last year, and two, Nicole's already admitted singing is not her bag. My commitment is to acting, I really like, I mean, that's what I'm passionate about. And if that requires singing or requires dancing, then that's part of the package. But in, but in terms of actually pursuing a career as a singer, I, I don't think I'll be doing that in the near future. Hollywood's most overused phrase in the near future. If Nicole ever has to sit in for her supper, she'll lose weight. Robbie, however, was happy working with a fellow publicity shy recluse. She came into the studio and she was shy and she was nervous and it was um, it was nice to see that, you know, it was like, well, I'm not the only one that's shy and nervous. He's hoping the new album, Swing When You're Winning, full of old Sinatra and Davis Jr. Swing, will keep him in pies for years. He might need the cash. He's facing a big damages claim after similarities were spotted between his song, Jesus in a Camper Van, and Loudon Wainwright's I Am The Way. Press your remote control, interactive buttons, now! Yeah, sorry about that. I'll give you the result when we finally get interactive technology. Still, the full version of Robbie and Nicole's Something Stupid will be played on Top of the Pops tomorrow. Matt Flint, BBC News. Looking excited at that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah.
Now for news from the dark side of pop Ooh. life. <laughs> Gary Barlow is unfortunately <laughs> shutting down his fan club after new figures revealed that membership was lagging behind the Young Druids Club set up by Ken Barlow, not his father. <laughs> the ex-boy band had decided to save on postage after failing to capitalise on solo success post Take That. He was dropped by his record company in March, although rumours persist that he's still writing and recording somewhere for some reason. Now, um, people, it's unfair, isn't it? I mean, you've all, all got that to look forward to, haven't you, Brad? <laughs> yeah. No, but on a serious note, it looks as if kind of pop bands... You sat comfortably? <laughs> Source it comfortably. Pop bands have kind of like a longevity to them, and you're all young adults, you all know, you know the reality of it. Like yeah. five after three albums, yeah. steps, possibly breaking up in the new year, who knows, who cares. So four albums you might get to. So you, are, you all gonna, are you all interested in a solo career at some stage? Well, I think everyone, you know, probably has got some idea of what they want to do after. But we will cross that bridge when it comes. But you're, you're right, pop bands do have a shelf life, yeah. Rachel, you're learning piano in preparation, aren't you, for a solo career, you said. Okay. How are those for the lesson? <laughs> Very well, thank English. you. Would you like me to... No, we don't have a piano, unfortunately. No. But is anyone in preparation for a solo career, Jo? No, no, we're all really busy with S Club at the minute, so we're just, you know, getting ready for our next tour, just coming up, beginning of next year. Um, you know, just busy promoting the single, the album. So. But there's, there's going to be thousands of you, aren't there? They're kind of the second generation of fans all trying to go through the second careers, because it was Take Down the Spice Girls, yeah. and only one seems to come from each band. But now we've got, you know, when A1 disintegrate, the 18s, the U and Hearsay and all that, mm. there's going to be thousands of you launching solo careers. It's going to be messy and bloody, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> bloody yeah. huge. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but that doesn't maybe. necessarily mean just because they're in a, you know, like a pop band, doesn't necessarily mean they're not talented, you know what I mean? Well, no one said that. <laughs> I'm it, you know. Who are your uh, show friends? Robbie Williams, John? Friend of yours? No. No? Do no. you have any show business? No. no. Not really. No. 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 Well, no, we're, show business. <laughs> we're just too busy. You know, you turn up to TV shows and whatever and you say, oh, hello. And then that's it, really, sort of like in passing. Bye bye. And there are so many of you as well. <laughs> mm. yeah. Do you all travel around kind of in, in one dormobile or? <laughs> no, <but how laughs> that'd be wicked. No, we all we live in into London, a little. So we all get our own cars yeah. wherever we need to be. Right. Get one each. How much money? Have you made? Um, oh, 20 million. About <laughs> <laughs> Enough to keep your head up. Just like to say, well, <laughs> lots of young adults watching. This is not Nickelodeon on the Disney Channel. Okay. And we're all young adults here. We are. We're yeah. all in the same generation. Yeah. I like the way I'm saying that. So I hope you're going to be revealed some personal exclusives about yourself later in the programme. Okay. Things that we haven't heard. Okay. Right, right. To get the ball rolling, okay. I'll tell you some things about myself. Great. Go on. Which nobody is interested in whatsoever at home. But it's like a swap okay. for this. Swap so I will tell you that um, I'm very worried that I'm single and in the late 20s. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still single, I'm very worried about that. That's yes. a genuine thing. Oh, don't worry. Oh, There's someone out there for everyone. My career ambition <laughs> is to host a Eurovision Song Contest. You can laugh now if you want. <laughs> career ambition. <laughs> So there we are. I've given and I okay. expect something back in return which you haven't heard before. Okay. Serious and sincere. Great. Mm -hmm. okay. Is that no a deal? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Tina? Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Still ahead on this programme. Private Dancing in the Dock with Girls Up plus Westlife, Knit One, Pearl Wall, and Madonna, Bare Knuckle, Title Hustle. This is Liquid Music. <laughs> First, though, Jimmy Golzar is set to stand trial over allegations that he assaulted a three-year-old child. Yeah. The former Mr Scary Spice appeared for magistrates in London to deny a charge of common assault. This all follows an incident at London Zoo in September. He'll now stand trial on January the 21st. Following the brief hearing, Jimmy had this message for the world. I can't say too much about this, and you know that anyway. Um, but um, what I can do say is... Um, have a nice day. <laughs> Dutch thing. <laughs> now, following... Oh, for goodness sake. Who is coughing? Me. It's freezing us. I've only got a loud Now, one. back to the news stories of the week. <laughs> following the liberation of Kabul, you'd think things would be looking up for the people of Afghanistan. But news comes that Mariah Carey wants to adopt a little Afghan baby. The singers apparently told her hey, pals that she's going to adopt a troubled Kabul kid. Sources close to the star allegedly reckon the adoption will make her life complete. Mariah's been in the wars herself recently, following a crockery breakdown. 
<laughs> Kylie's pants up for grabs. If you enjoy the feel of skimpy cotton panties with quick release bows at either side, just a personal thought. You should set your alarm clock this morning. Kylie's personal jockeys with highlight of Ready at Two's Children Need auction on Wogan's show this AM. The kinky Kex raised £4,000. Also thrown in with the panty lot was Victoria Beckham's extensive personal hairbrush collection. I did for that. Uh, Westlife <laughs> reached number one for the ninth time this week with their Lean On Me, Mull of Kintyre hybrid song called Queen of My Heart. This brings them level with the Spice Girls, and now the boys have their sights on the record 17 chart toppers achieved by the Beatles, Elvis and the 18s. On Monday, they released their new album, World of Our Own. The boys are going head-to-head -head with Madonna, whose greatest hits, Volume 2, was also out on the same day. So we asked the knitwear posse whether there are any comparisons with their battle last year with the Spice Girls. The Spice Girls were great, and at that stage they were like, I think they were going down anyway, and they were on their way out. So it wasn't, it was a big achievement, but it wasn't really. But this time it's like Madonna, it's like she's always going to be a legend. So I think if we do overpass Madonna, I think this time we really will be taking it from behind. <laughs> <laughs> Oh what? What's a joke? <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Yeah, no, it was. I don't think anyone in Westlife will be taking Madonna from behind. It's <laughs> a whole, whole different ball game. What do you put the success of uh, Westlife down to, Rachel? Um, they're five very cute young guys that little girls love, I guess, and they seem great. Mm. It's funny you mentioned the word cute there, isn't it? Because obviously cute. good looks sells. Especially Nicky with his new haircut. Not always in news and on television, apparently, but it does sell. And you have, you've had all this, this stuff recently, haven't you, about being you know, the world's second uh, sexiest woman voted for in that poll. How, how, how do you react and how do you feel about all that stuff? Very flattered by it. It's great. My nephew's 14. Really? Yeah, and he doesn't contact me very often. He was very excited about the fact that I'd be meeting you for some Aww. particular reason. Say hello for me. What kind of image does that conjure up, I wonder? Um, but is, is, is there too much emphasis on Rachel, Tina, all the time? Rachel, Rachel, Rachel. Oh, not at all, not at all. You know, I'm Rachel, I mean, it's really flattering for Rachel, definitely. And um, we, we, you know, we all support her. But you're all gorgeous and she's getting all that attention over there. Oh, hey, it's good, it's good. What's that for? <laughs> Looking gorgeous. Okay, fine. So, uh, are you preparing your kind of personal ambitions and, and what you're going to reveal in just a moment? Oh, God. Oh, thank you, about it. We're going to move on, but I do want some serious stuff coming from you. Oh, okay. It's time to say goodbye, oh, Bye. Bye. Anyway, talking about Madonna, uh, Madonna is currently uh, being outsold by Westlife 2 to 1 in that album battle. Oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah. I'm mad. Anyway, so Madonna is unlikely to be perching at the top of the charts this time next week. Her pride may be heard, but not her bank balance in a liquid asset special this Sunday evening at 8 on Choice. Our attack poodle, Max Flint, is unleashed to sniff out her cash and find out exactly how much she's worth. And it's a lot, but not as much as you might think after Madonna's decades at the coalface of pop. As well as planes, boats and automobiles, there's some new unseen footage of Madge in the early years. We've also got Vinnie Jones teaming up with Dolce & Gabbana to defend her honour. That's on BBC Choice at 8. Now, tonight's sofa and stool sensations join us on the eve of doing the collective bits and pieces for children in need. Have you ever is their second single uh, for that particular charity, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Are you like the in-house band? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Anyway, it's uh, released on Monday, and let's have a look at the uh, promo slice clip. Sometimes it's wrong to walk away Though you think it's over Knowing there's so much more to say Suddenly the moment's on And all your dreams are upside down And you just want to change the way the world goes round Is wrong. We 
<laughs> Another ballad. <laughs> yeah. A little bit yeah. sad, this one. It's got yeah. a very yeah. serious yeah. message, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Should we talk to John? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 John. Yeah. 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 Let's talk to John. It's depressing. I'm depressed over the washing up. Though. It is quite depressing. <laughs> but it is. It's about loss, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Kids losing parents or vice versa and stuff like that. Yeah, it could be about anyone losing anyone. Well, there we go. That's enough of that, really. I think yeah. it's all really <laughs> shared down. Yeah. Now, um, I just, I'm, I'm still a little kind of a loss to understand. You look as if you're pained during this interview for some particular <laughs> reason. How, how, did all, how did it all come about? <laughs> about the whole S Club 7 stuff, uh, about the TV series and then the pop band, was it all like a great big plan? Or did, I mean, ha tell me how it worked. Basically, it was a lot of auditions. Uh, we all came together from mass auditions around the country. And... Um, that's basically the story. Then we went off and we did the first album at club and we went to Miami and did Miami 7. You have happily ever after. Yeah, it was really quite an easy Miami thing. 7, LA 7, Hollywood, Hollywood 7. 7. Luton 7 next year. Yeah, yeah. 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 that'll bother me, yeah. Bradley very much in the news this week. We did a story on, uh, on you over on BBC Choice on a live show at 7. Just a little plug for myself. I'm just plugging everything else. Uh, you had a go, didn't you, at the Pop Idol show? I didn't have a go at them. Um, it got twisted. I could break it down. Basically, what I'm saying is, you know, there's, there's room for merchandise bands. I mean, merchandise bands. <laughs> manufacturer, but you need them. I was going to say, like, if you take all the manufacturer bands out of the industry for a little while, they'll be, be boring. There'll be nothing for the kids to see. So you need, you need manufacturer bands. Your words are always twisted, aren't they? Awful always general. twisted. It's having a go at you all the time. If one of you left, what would you call yourselves? Uh, would you call yourself S Club Six? No, I think uh, so they wouldn't be a band. It wouldn't be a band. Yeah. Would you start if one of you left? But yeah. Yeah. Left. yeah. Yeah. I don't think it would work. But imagine you know, one of you was having a baby or something. Oh, that's different. Bradley, <laughs> you're a child. <laughs> what? If you had a baby, what would you do? If one of you left, you'd, you'd leave. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. it would yeah. end. I don't think it would work because we started in S Club Seven. And I don't think we'd be right in S Club Six. Right? Yeah. One There's, for all, one all for. <laughs> Poppy appeals and stuff as oh, well. Oh, look at That's nice. You do a lot for charity. Well, we good. <laughs> <laughs> what What was the idea behind these snow boots in this particular video? We've not seen that, but anyway. Uh, oh, yeah, we got put in them yeah, for the look, big, really. They? They, they are quite large. I quite um, Good. A, lo a lot of people watching the show will uh, obviously know your music. Uh, from listening to it on radio, they may not have bought it necessarily because we're watching a show a little bit older than perhaps we're used to. They will, of course, know you from that big story uh, about the, the smoking pot as well, which I think you dealt with very, very well at the time, and we're not going to go into at all in any depth. But the question is, what were you actually thinking of by doing it in public? That is the only thing I think people out there still want to know about it. Nothing. Nothing. We weren't thinking. That was the thing. That, that's, that's the problem. Nice touch. That's the lead. No, seriously, you just weren't thinking because, I mean, you dealt with it really well and you apologised. Yeah. But... Oh, God. <laughs> okay. It's mad how many people thought it was a publicity stunt, really. Yeah, they did, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> just stupid. And the girls, yeah. the girls were out shoplifting. <laughs> It's time now to get to your personal revelations. I've given something. No, it's time to give back. Okay. Uh, let's start with someone vaguely serious. Anna, what about you? What about me? Um, well, just anything. What, did you not hear what I did at the top of the show? Just, hear, just tell us something real. You young, bright, intelligent adults. Give me something real about yourself. I I like to. Um... <laughs> Right, let's come to Bradley. We'll come back to you. Okay. Let's go real well. about myself. Yeah. Like, I hope. Yeah. Okay, well, I like, we haven't heard it before. <laughs> I like to spend time in the studio. I like to write music. I like to, you know, just sit there with my friends and just, you know, be inspired. Yeah. You know? I have no idea what's going on with you lot. <laughs> John, can you go next, please? Something okay, interesting. Um... I get really bad athlete's foot. See, that's good. Right. Really, that's good really, really, really bad athlete's foot. Rachel? Um, oh, um... Uh, um I did give you time to think about it. <laughs> I have got a red crack I know, I was busy. Oh, if, you, if you want to zoom in on it. And it has been there for about a month now, and it won't go. Tina? Um, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Was that interesting? Like it was, bless you. Uh, Tina? OK, you can't, they don't show up on television, but... Um, I've had like, some highlights put in my black, black hair. Um, I don't know if you can sort of see. No. I'm learning a lot about it. <laughs> <laughs> can anybody some, give me something deep, interesting? Well, yes. Career so what do you want to know? Um... Well, a lot. <laughs> John? 
I mean, um, um, me, uh, Four. I just, um, Four. I can only, uh, no, I know, I know, I know, no, I don't, I don't know, know anything, actually, sorry, I'm, I'm boring you. It's hard, though, when someone's got a telephone, it's like, say, what's your favourite song of the whole, in, in the whole of the world? Well, it's, it's obviously Reach of the Stars. Yeah, oh, just kind really? of flat uh, That is the hardest question I know. Okay. The new album is uh, coming up as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And you're doing you're doing something a little bit solo because you sing virtually every single one, don't you? No. Well, it seems that way, doesn't it? You're always out the yeah. front. Yeah, I mean, single. Yeah. 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 So do you ever want to just pull her back and say, "Come on, give me a bit of a go here"? Yeah. That's what we yeah. Yeah. I, I get beaten. You have to buy the Defensive. album, you see. If you want to hear let everyone else sing, you have to buy the album. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Fine <laughs> Well, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. I think we've all learnt a lot. <laughs> we've shared a great deal, and you'll stay with us for the rest of the show. Cool. Yeah, yes. definitely. Yeah, definitely. A little bit of doubt there. Anyway, we have a uh, fantastic pop package to give away in this week's competition, which includes lots of S Club 7 gifts. What did you bring? No, no idea. idea. <laughs> and also, we've got the Hearsay Dolls uh, from uh, last week, which uh, can provide you with endless hours of fun. I can assure you of that. Uh, you can log on to our website uh, for the details. There it went. Now, still ahead on this edition, Diana goes Deutsch in Musical a Musical. Spending months monitoring Channel 5's Touch the Truck, the Taste Police are now heading for Germany, where a musical based on the life of Princess Diana has opened. The show, which features a dancing Diana and a cackling Camilla, is about to set off on a European tour, but producers promise it won't come here. You can't believe this story, can you? The BBC's royal musical correspondent, Jeff Moody, reports. It was the weekend's must-see event in Saarbrücken, a little piece of theatre history. Sixteen hundred punters turned out to watch Lady Di, Diana, A Smile Charms the World. It's a catchy title. It charts the life of the people's princess from the day of her marriage through to the events in Paris, with plenty of love, laughter and loud noises in between. Bitter! Stop! As you can see, it's a tasteful production. Here's the moment when Diana attempts suicide. Once I'd read it, I decided that I wanted to do it just because of the way that they followed her story. Funny that. When everyone else read it, they ran a mile. But once it's exhausted the major arts venues in Western Germany, the show's heading for Holland and a translation into English. So we see this tasteful tribute appearing in Britain. It might be a bit too close to actually go and, and do this production in London because of her sons and because of the royal family, but I don't have a problem with doing it personally, because I think that it deals with her in a really respectful way. A thought echoed by the show's producer. But um es English to make, habe ich gedacht, even English and music. It seems conspiracy theories and death threats, which should certainly keep a few lawyers in business. Oh, and the scenery wobbles. Jeff Moody, BBC News. Do you have a problem with the telling of that story in German in a musical form? Yeah. It seems quite strange, yeah. doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. It's not good. Yeah, yeah. no. Anybody want to be in a musical? Yeah, I'd love to do it. I, I mean, that's what I trained to do. Mm. So, and, and John went to musical yeah. theatre school as well. I'd like, I'd like to do it. Anybody getting married? Me. <laughs> Are you getting married? Are you getting yeah. married to your, your fiancé, isn't it? Yeah. Lee? Yeah. 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 Good. Anybody else? Thanks. One day. Yeah. No, so you go out, not, not you go out with a nurse, don't you, from Holby City? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeremy Edwards, lovely Jeremy. And you two, of course, being in the papers as you're together, been together six mm -hmm. months. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Nice. How's that going? Still six months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been right. to IKEA yet together? <laughs> um, uh, did that wait three? No, yeah, no. <laughs> Don't go. <laughs> three years, years ago. ago. <laughs> if you do, you'll end up single in your thirties, and it's not fun. Right. Anyway. No, thank oh, you very much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really nice of you to much. come. Thank you. Uh, that is it uh, from us. For more of the very latest entertainment news, you can join us live at seven. That's every weeknight over on BBC Choice. Coming up on the show next week, we'll be reporting from New York at the International Emmy Awards, and. We'll have the latest from the premiere of Kevin Spacey's brand new film, which is called K Pact. We're back on BBC One wow. next Thursday night when Danny Minogue, who's supporting you at GAY in London at the yeah. Gay Club, yeah, that's right. Right. Uh, yeah, she'll be here on the show along with Pete Waterman. They'll both be my pop idols on the Bonquet. That is it. Hello. Who to? Pete Waterman. Oh, right, sorry. I thought you were saying hello to your aunt or something, yeah. Bradley. Anybody else want to use this service? No, thanks. Messages. No, no, no. No. Yeah. <laughs>
That's it from us. See you back on Choice, of course, live every weeknight at 7. Goodbye. 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 Bye. Bye.